Right guys, I'm back here on Hawcott Main Lake, having Gloucestershire. Day ticket car at water. I said I'm going to hopefully be uh, trying to catch tench, bream, maybe some rud. But using a bit of an old school technique, instead of going distance casting, I'm going to come in a lot closer to, sh to shore, closer to the bank. And I can see already down here, somebody's had a lot of trouble with weed there. I've got a garden rake with a bit of rope holding on, on the end of it. And I'm going to go out, just wade out a little way and see if I can't clear a patch for me to get some bait in. I'm going to be using a pair of these neoprene chest waders. I've got these over in British Columbia. So water's cold, places like the Fraser River, big salmon rivers, and it's cold water, depending on what time you go. Obviously, if you go early June, you've got the glacial runoff, it's going to be cold. So the neoprene with a bit of kneeling implement there, hopefully. Don't worry, I'll get them leaking sooner or later if they don't already. And uh, these are called Wardell. I'm not selling them, I'm just telling you what they are. But they're soft and supple on the top, so they're nice and light to wear. But of course, they don't have a built-in boot section to them. So, what I've done, I've previously used old pairs of sawn off waders that have leaked, and I've got a really old pair of trainers. Easy when I launch my boat as well. Take the laces out of them, and the tongues, I've cut the laces and the tongues out of those. Um, so nobody's likely to steal these trainers. Um, and then I can slide them on, but of course, you just be careful shuffling it along. I'm not going to go out far because obviously, being a gravel pit, it could go like that. Um, we just have a little way down, just clear a patch here and see if I can't uh, put some bait in and get some fish moving over that uh, area that I've cleared. All I'm using, I normally would have a double back rake. I tied two rakes back to back so they've got teeth here because obviously sometimes you can pull in this way. But that's all I've got, tied it off there. Bit of duct tape around there as well. I hopefully throw it out like this, pull it in, and as you can see, there's no shortage of weed here. Now, generally, tench are about the first species to move in. It's like just after lunchtime, so they're not going to move in yet. I would ideally do this about a day, a couple of days in advance. I've got no choice. I'm going to do it today. Put some bait in, and hopefully. Evening or tonight, I hope that buzzer goes off. So let's get out there and, and listen. Youngsters, don't do it without, without an adult and make yourself use that in front of you so you can feel for the depths. One thing you need to do is make a loop in the end, put your hand through, otherwise you throw the lot in the water. And yes, I've done that as well. So it's tempting to want to throw all your ground bait in now and get it really baited up and then sit back. But what I do when it's all stirred up like that, that's disturbed lots of little insects. I like to get that to settle first, that sediment, and then put your bait in. I might give it half an hour or so before I put any bait in. I'll start to see the clarity, uh, or really the stirred up colour drop out of it on the inside first. And then I'll put the bait out there. So if I put my bait in immediately after I've raked and stirred it all up, 
any bait sits on the bottom and then the sediment drops out and that's obviously going to cover a lot of my bait. So some people say they like it that way, it makes the tench dig around and the other fish bream, but I like it, you know, to be on the top. Now, if I can only get out of these, I can get myself rigged up. Well, I've had a good old rake out there. Uh, not too bad for weed. I've maybe put a boilie over in that side and just fish a pair of rods straight out of here. Now, the benefit here, of course, is that doing all this stirring up is effectively getting food for them. You know, they're going to be hopefully moving in there. going to take two or three hours. The first fish will come in, I think, will be the rud and then the perch when this settles down. And I'm going to give a good raking on the inside here because I might want to film there. I might want to drop a bait in there. The last time I was down there, I do. I can remember seeing a tench come in where I'd been doing underwater filming, just dropping pieces of bait in bags. So there's always a chance there. Fishing very, very close, so I want to make sure it's clear. Obviously, I can send a feeder out, then if I start pulling weed in, I know to come closer. If you were doing this at distance, say from a boat, you'd obviously put a marker out there so you know in the weed bed where you've actually cleared. We used to do that as well. A bit tricky at night though, finding a narrow beam. We used to have to get a narrow beam, narrow beam torch to pick up the, uh, the marker. Right. I'll do a little bit more inside raking here and a few more half dozen or a dozen throws and I'll let all this lot settle and see where we're at. I've got some worms which I'm going definitely to be using with tench in mind. I've got some maggots. They come with uh, maize in them to help dry them up so they don't sweat. They're warming up now. They've been in the fridge. So, so you keep your maggots in the fridge to keep them cool. It slows down the metabolism of them. Now they're going like crazy obviously because it's warm. But I put bran in there as well, and that helps get rid of any ammonia smell that they have in them. They give off ammonia when they're in a confined area. Bait and liquid for me. Bait for me. Bait for the fish. Some chum mixed bis biscuits here. Mixed dog biscuits, which I've soaked in water overnight, so they're really nice and look lovely and spongy. Um, but they're not going into as dark, because otherwise it's duck city. In here, I've got expander pellets, which I soak up, I think. This one I've obviously caught on Lake Canal River. Just all round cereal bait. I've, you know, you know at the bottom of this is my mix, but I'm going to put some of that in with it. But I'm going to keep a separate tub back. And this one is says Sweet Marine, which I've heard of before, pole float feed. It's a general mix, but I'm going to make that with a feed. I'm going to put uh, boilies out. Got some smaller ones there because obviously I'm tension bream. They will take the big ones, but they're more likely to take smaller ones. And here is a mega mix of my own ground bait, to which I put virtually everything in a little tub I've got from about two years ago, and it smells a bit of everything. So I think I'm going to keep the expander pellets back. I'm going to pop a bit of this in there as well. This one does smell nice. Yeah, I can go. Uh, I can put it all in. Just get rid of it. Take your litter home, people. There's no need to leave litter on the bank. Now, normally I'll be using this in the feeder as well, but I think I'm going to make a little tub up of different stuff for feed and stamp this down. All this is while I'm waiting for that bit of colour that I stirred up. And even in here, look, this was black. That's 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 already started stirring up. Uh, started uh, falling out. Don't overwet your ground bait. Same old story. But this stuff, Bailey's horse feed. Some bran. Sort of. 50-50-ish. I'll probably get some rud coming in there close as well. Last time I fished in their tench lake, they had loads of rud and I did see some out there. What I don't want is baiting up close in. These guys know what I'm mixing up, look at those swans. They've just come across from the specimen lake. But the old Baileys takes a while to soak up the water a bit, so... Let's give that a go. I can smell all the different flavours in there. I'm after anything. A tench would be nice. A tench would be nice. They have some humongous bream in here. I don't expect I'll get those, but four or five pound bream would be nice. And uh, outside chance, get some rad perch. I don't know where they got big perch in. I don't know. That's quite sticky now. Give that a little bit more. 
Now, if you see where I wash my hands in here, nothing will probably come in here, but on a deeper drop off, where you wash your hands, you want to watch because you can get big fish moving in close. I'm going to wait purposely for those swans to clear off before I throw any in. Aiming to do, maybe put the bivy here. Fish sort of here because I'm striking right handed. If I left handed and I struck, I would go into the trees. So being right handed, if a bob bobbin goes up, I can grab it and strike here. I'm going to put the other rub right around the side to the right of those ducks, almost under the tree. I do believe the ducks have seen me mix up that ground bait as well. Some of them dive down the bottom, which is quite annoying. I think I'll do the bivy first. All right, well, how close do I put my rods? I think I've got to go back a little bit, otherwise the front rest I've got to go and put them in the water and I've got to think of filming. And I'm really, really pretty tight here. As you can see, that's a few I've got. I think I'm going to pull it back a bit before I peg it down. You know, if, I've got, if I'm down here filming, I need to be able to step up a bit and I know all the junk and clobber I've got. It's on a sort of public footpath as well, so I want to keep stuff fairly tight on the inside of the bivvy. I think I'll move it back a bit. Hopefully uh, I've got space. Well, the birds have uh, moved off a bit, so I'm gonna give a bit of a bombardment. I'm gonna make some balls of ground but up and they're gonna fire them in as fast as I can so that the uh, swans have a minimal time to get hold of them. Right, I'm gonna pound some balls of ground but out pretty well as fast as I can. because the birds will be coming. Now I'll be casting. Get them out as quick as I can, even in twos. See the birds don't take long to come and I'm just going to drop a couple down there. Just purely as an experiment to see if anything does come in later in the night. Job done. Now I'll fire some small boilies out there I think. I could throw those by hand. In fact I've got to be honest guys, I can see that easily there. I can go a little bit farther. And that make a white carpet. If anything does come in there, I probably could see it. Job done. Boily time. There yeah, you can see that's going white area there. It's a gamble. I've got here banoffee. Well I know the wife makes banoffee pie with the family coming around, so that's sweet. Spicy crab, that's half empty, so you know I've caught on that one before. Fruity tuna. So I'm thinking tuna and crab. Then I've got a really good boilie in there. Super secret one. That I'm going to drop out there. Um, I've only got two left. <laughs> they're extra hard boilies but they're really really good ones. So we're using just loose feed. The benefit of this margin fish is, I'll just chuck a few down there. I can throw them by hand. That's how close I'm going to be fishing. Here comes Mr. Swan, so we'll ease off the feed. They obviously do smell it as well. I think he's more intent on pushing these guys away, so I'll chance a few more out there. I hope it's too deep for you. Right, that'll do for now. I suppose better put a rod in the water, I suppose. Is that what they do when they're fishing? They do that, don't they? I've seen them. I've watched these videos. A bloke puts a rod and a bait in the water. Been there an hour, I've done nothing. Oh, I'm going to mix my 
actual feeder mix up, which is that sweet merino business. I don't think I need to put anything with it in fairness. I've seen this stuff sort of uh, the matchman's ground bait pop off the surface bits and pieces so there's herbs and spices and stuff like that and I'm going to bung a bit of this strawberry that's half used so you know that I've caught on this before. There we go. Get in there my boy, a bit of gunky gluey stuff. At least it makes my hands smell nice during the night. Now, let's mix this up with very carefully. Get the right consistency. Just use my hand for that. I've not used this particular one. I don't think there's so many different matchman's flavours, you know. And I'm going to be using a homemade golf ball feeder. Now, although I've used white ground bait out there, you can see it all in, in the margins. Some of this stuff, these matchmen use, all these flavours and stuff in there, actually do explode out the feeder quite well, you know, so do find they attract fish. You just got to get that consistency right. I'm not going to say I know it, I'm not a matchman. But you, I know you've got to get it just right, not too wet is a big thing. So I'm going to let that sort of soak up a while. I want it to pinch in the, like that. Possibly, because I've got so much feed out there now and I've stirred up, it won't sort of hurt if it does break up on impact. There we go. Smell it, nice smell to it. All that strawberry. Into that, I can put some live maggots, but I have got here a load of frozen dead ones, which I'm going to catapult out as well, put those in loose. Let's just put a few Put a shake a few maggots in there. Thing is a lot of rud here. Those rud are gonna nosh their way through these maggots big time. Well guys, it's uh, been a couple of hours. I think I'm going to put some bass in the water because it's come over really cloudy. So it's not to do with the time, which will be the evening, it's to do with the light levels are nice and low. Probably got a lot of reflection coming off here, but I'm going to drop my uh, baits out and show you what I'm using. So in a big tench I caught by people fishing for carp with a boilie, I've put that same rig out. It's a spicy tuna boilie, put it that way, in a bag with half a dozen others. And I'm just going to lob it in up there and leave it on that drop. Just where I waded out there, it started to drop away. I imagine it goes all the way along. And just, I'm not bumping it or anything. I'm sinking it, putting the rod way over the right here. Just there, on the bait runner. And I should think it, if it, anything takes it, it should be a good take. Let's get a bobbin. Bobbin is the old washing up bottle top. Assuming the, any batteries are any good in this thing. I may have mentioned it in one of my other films that with barbless hooks, the hooks like this, you thread your live baits up, that's maggots, worms, they'll wriggle and pop off and pop off and pop off. So I'm using one of those grips hooks, which has little ridges, it's barbless, but little bumps on the inside there. So what I then do is get a rubber band like this, cut it into sections about, I'm going to say maggot size, look there, about that size, and then that pops over those little ridges on those grips hooks. Not selling grips hooks, I'm just telling you, an ordinary barbless hook, it works, but it doesn't work as well as it does on those grips hooks. So let's bake this one up. Show you what I'm using. It's not rocket science. It is. A guy sent me these. Don't belong to his father. I forget the story on it. Half of a driving golf ball, practice one. And they nearly always settle down that way because he's got weight in there. A tube in line going through him like that. I've got a barrel shovel stopping. I'm six pound either side. 
one of those hooks on here and then what happens is I'll do it with this and I'm going to show you the rubber band does that can you see that that's what the rubber band does and it holds the baits on the live baits if you're fishing with sweet corn lunch and meat statics unlive stuff then obviously it doesn't wriggle off there's nothing worse than waking up after a sleepless night of twitchy bites and you've got a bare hook going to be using some worm I've got those dendrobenas but I've also got because I got mullered by rad last time I came I just dug a handful of these regular earthworms so then in the fat end I go through oh hook size you want to know hook size I'm guessing six would it be something like that now something else I've been doing is they do it sea fishing. I think Tony Kerridge told me about it. You just put a twist in the worm, roll it, and then sort of stitch it on like that. They do it with um, lug worm and rag. Okay, so I then get my little tag of rubber, just like that, over the top. Of course, you can look, should you so wish. got a uh, mixture just a pint of red and whites you can put I'm gonna put on here let's say two whites then if they wriggle off it doesn't matter they white during the daytime will give them a bit of a target for the fish to look at you know to spot they might see this first and then move on the worm and then I'm just gonna get my ground bait in there when you leave it standing for some time you'll find the maggots all come to the top because they obviously want the oxygen most of the maggots go around the edge I'll just mix them up again put the feeder in Wow, that's some weird ass smell on that one. I find out if it's any good. Probably does want dampen a bit more, but it will do for one cast, I feel. It's used by the matchman, so it must be good. I squeeze it nice and hard. And listen, here it's an overhand cast, uh, underhand. Look. Sink it a little bit as it's going through the water. And then when it hits the bottom, close the bone on, make sure all that drag's a bit tasty. Whoa. Get it set right, your drag. You never know what you're going to hit into, especially here. Just tighten up a bit. No bait runner on these, these are just regular course fishing reels. Bobbino, bobbing on there. Pretty loud. Just it by. Just don't know if what I want a long drop short. I'll tell you what I will do. I'm gonna sh shallow that down. Now I've got bobbins here for mics, these are mic ones. I can't be bothered to uh, use those, they might be too heavy. And then I'm going to put it on back one as well for safety. Because apparently they've got some humongous bream in here. What a mess, isn't that a mess? <coughs> well, I've got some rad actually feeding just in close, really, really close. Just slightly out where I put that ground bait. I'm sort of halfway tempted because it's dead at the moment, I've had one beep. On worm and maggot. I might just try and catch a few rad there to be honest. So at least I save the blank, don't they? So a couple of them look like they might be six or eight ounces, maybe half a pound. Grand eight ounces is half a pound. They could be six or eight ounces or even half a pound. <laughs> or a quarter of a kilo. Hmm. Tiny, tiny float. I might be able to knock a few rad out for you. I think they're rad. A little bit of ground weight there but just squeezing it loose so it uh, goes down through the water quite slowly. Certainly attracted the seagull. Right, what I've got, I've been feeding them and feeding them. These are just frozen dead maggots. Pinches of them, we've been feeding the robin just down there. But I've got some rud just in there, look, they're absolutely boiling. Piranhas. They're not very big, three or four inches. I've rigged up my match rod. Um, the 
The reason they're boiling like this on the surface is because these are dead maggots, so they sink really slowly. So it's more likely to get a rud than anything. And you can see how they're demolishing the bait, so I'll get it about eight o'clock and then I'll uh, pound some more bait out because I think a lot of that's already gone. So, match rod, five pound line, tangle. All I've got is a stick float here. Bottom end, a couple of BB shot. Another small shot, about number eight down the line. <clears throat> here is size 20 barbless, I guess, onto which I'm gonna put two maggots. I think they'll be tugging that float the hook is so small, I can't even see to get, I think it's at least a 20. There we go. I don't even think I need leash feed, watch this one. This is a swing out and swing back job. Watch the float, they've got it. Oh, I missed him. I'm gonna give the big camera and, oh, I bumped it. A tricky, oh, there he is. On a single maggot, I'll be one after the other. There we go. There we go. It's off. Graham, don't count your chickens for the hatch, mate. There's one. Oh, look. <laughs> I gotta love barbless and silk, some yeah. There we go. I'm guessing they're rad. Well, I know they're rad. So on the surface, only small fish. My God. What a lot of pike baits you could stock up with. Only a small fish. Save the blank. Pinch of dead maggots. They're boiling on the surface. My float won't last. Aim five seconds. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh dear. Seven. There it goes. Oh, better, better rad, better rad. Hang on a minute, folks, hang on. Better rad. Well, I could abuse myself with these, can't I? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for some action this evening. Same mega, I feel. So you can see where I did all that raking and stirring up, it's made no difference to the fish at all, they move straight in on it. Now sometimes the, the line, the float just does this, it doesn't actually pull under. And if it does move in any way, shape or form, it's still worth lifting into the fish. I'll tell you when the bite comes, there. Bumped him off. This is just a piece of skin now on this hook. Look at this, look, 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 look there. Do you want a pole? How many could you catch, for God's sake? I'll try it with a bunch and see if I can get a slightly bigger one. going again a little bit farther out actually three maggots on there three maggots will it get me a slightly bigger one <laughs> it's, got, it's got me a smaller one and he's throated the lot I'm trying a little bit farther out in case there's a I dare say they're all uh, millions of them Oh, 
all good. Wow, unbelievable pike baits. Unbelievable. I like dead baiting because I can put the uh, bait where I want. Just want a little pinch of maggots, scatter them in and then follow up literally straight away with the float. <clears throat> with that straight away. That was double maggots. A few are doing this on many waters, you would definitely, definitely get a pike moving on you when they're feeding like this. And you just get him taking the uh, roach or rud off the, straight off the hook. Sometimes you land them, but mostly you just end up playing them for ages and, and still lose them. Here you go. Here's it. And a tangle. And if you do fish really, really small hooks, 20s and stuff, you can get three maggots on, but rather than cluster the actual hook bend and point itself, instead of hooking the fat end of the maggot, try hooking the very, very thin end, because there's you know, less body of the maggot around uh, the hook point then, as if you're fishing bunches. The float's barely going under now. Just dragging across the surface. And they're coming off and putting themselves back there. Makes me want to go sort of chub fishing when I see that float go away like this. Ooh, that's a better one. See I'm amusing myself in between the other two rods either side. Bit of a better fish. They're pretty much all the, uh, the same stamp though, in fairness. I do actually wonder if they're farther out or they're only in the margin where I've done all that raking. Oh, I've got three mags going to Give it a bit of a throw farther out, as far as I can go and see if they'll... They're still out there. Sometimes it'll actually come to the splash of the float hitting the water. Well, logically they shouldn't be out there, they should be in here where I've been feeding. You never know. Nothing, but if I bring it in here, where I've been baiting there, I'm going to pick a fish up. There we go close in they are. Obviously they like that depth. Right, I've enough of the rudder right on the inside. I've had one perch out where I baited them. I'm about to have a session of ground baiting, but I'm just going to try a bit deeper in case there is different fish out there. I just fed some of that dark ground bait. You guys might not be able to see the fish out, uh, the float out there, it's just on the sh edge of the shiny, glary patch there. Because when you fish deep, it's must be about seven feet deep there. It takes a long time for the shot to tow it down the bottom. Makes me laugh. They dress up in green, they creep around, and then they get a sledgehammer and hammer their bivvy stakes in. <laughs> As if it's all, <laughs> why are they creeping around? And they get stuck here and they're smashing great big stakes in and think, oh, don't disturb the fish, mate. Don't disturb the fish. I can hear it from 200 yards away. Well, it's gone six o'clock, stilled off really nicely. Still too light to put any uh, dog biscuits out there. Here you can see, if I point to the float, it's over there. Just drag it a little bit to the left. 
Well, I've got a fish on the float out there set deep. It's probably a rat. Might be a bit bigger one, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that paid off. I think they polished my ground bait off out there. Look at this, a nice rad. Just about to swing. There, that's, that was worth changing, wasn't it, guys? Look. That really was worth the change. Nice quality fish. And see how the older they get, they do get these brighter red, red fins and they go more gold, whereas the young ones are small ones, it's generally silver. To be honest, there's that many rad down there. I think I'm gonna call it quits here for a second. Leave the float rod in and give it a bit of a pounding. I think they've eaten that. And I tell the reason that I'm uh, saying that is because just inside here, that white patch of ground bait, you guys won't see it. Let's lean that up there. That gravel, that's all gone. So I think out there they've eaten a lot. Time for pounding. Oh, nice perch, guys. Could be the baiting up. Could be the time in the evening. Who knows? There he is, a chunky chappy. Well, that's a step in the right direction, isn't it? I've had small ones, but that's a nice, decent one. So let's get him back. There he goes. Up the right way, bud. Well, other than that perch, I just see some... Uh, Rud all here scattered, so there must be a pike or perch after them. Just down in here, haven't heard any beeping going on, excited shouts or anything. So it appears nobody's caught anything, all the carp guys that I can see. Probably waiting for it to get dark. Nothing on the boilie. I've got here a recommendation. This is the reason I wait till it's dark before I start throwing any dog biscuit floaters in. Straight on it. Imagine that, if that was all your expensive boilies and they will pick them off one after the other. Better wait this dark. Get a tin of Irish stew and some tin of boiled potatoes. You see, you mix them all together. Well, I've got them going separately at the moment, but there we go. Tin of boiled potatoes and a tin of no, not Irish stew. The next best thing it is indeed beef casserole. I'm having trouble just simmering. There's a thing called simmer. Um, the old gas cookers, these uh, stoves, don't seem to do simmer. They go simmer or out. Anyway, it's looking good and it's smelling good. If I can just tune that down even more, you're going to be out in a minute. That's about as low as I can get it. Um, put the float rod away, got it up there. Um, I'm all plumbed up with the float rod as well. Bigger float, bottom end only. Wagless, I can try that perhaps in the morning. And I'm back on two swim feeders, golf ball swim feeders. 
and this one I'll throw out again later on. At the moment, the priority is have something to eat first. Down here, how do you do simmer? How do you do simmer? That's a perch or I guess well this casserole smells nice. Let's keep taking it off to uh, make sure it's all right. And the spuds, these are sort of pretty well cooked. You just got to warm them all up. I can see what the guys mean. Drain the water off and put them in with the. I think that's what they mean. So I will try an Irish stew. But this is beef casserole, so we'll find out what it tastes like. Well, I think it's serving time, people. Let's turn that one off. Oh no, 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 no. You don't want any bites yet, please. Yeah, look at this, people. This is art. I can make a face out of that. Look at that. Teflon casserole. Oh. Get it down your neck. In fairness, I kept it low. It hasn't stuck. That to me does look wholesome. It's got to be better than some of the other tin stuff I eat. Forgive me while I tuck in a decent meal for a change. I've been getting some really good rudder here, people. Look at these ones. On the feeder, golf ball feeder. Oh, it hasn't got the orange fins. I wonder if that's a hybrid. Anybody got any ideas on that? Definitely an upturned jaw here, but no red fin. I've got, I've got both words on the go. I never, I've missed this one. I might have got this one. Oh, yes. Look at this. Look at this. And I lost both of them. All I've got, if you just look, see there is a rubber band. Right, something's on the bite out there anyway. Look at the size of these rub people. Oh my word. That's almost a netter. They are absolute chunks. In a few years' time, there's going to be some really good rub fish in here. Well, it's good rub fish in here now, the size of these. Real palm sized fish. Oh, maybe I'll be going just a tad too far. Because I'm barely. Look, they're on it already. I can feel it through my finger here. There he is. I'm going to hold this one touch ledger across my finger. This is like a big hook. Size six. Missed him, but I'm going to. Leave that down there. To be honest, I think I think there's just so many fish down there. You can almost fish without the bobbin, without the uh, bite indicator. It's on the go again. I'm trying to bait this. One. I'm trying to bait this one up. I'm hoping. A breed more attention will stumble across this in a minute. I haven't even bothered putting the rubber on this one on that piece of uh, elastic. So there's my feeder. Doesn't take a huge amount. Still beeping away there. I don't want that all night. When I fished the Tench Lake here at Hawkeye, I had the same thing, but it wasn't until it got dark that it actually, Jesus Christ, he's old. It wasn't until it's gone dark that I uh, started picking the Tench up and look at these. Honestly, goodness. Look, there's the golf ball feeder. There is another lovely looking rod. 
like the old matchwood like these. Look at them. Real good fish. Damp down again, I think I'll get a load of maggots in there and possibly use this one in the feeder. That should all, yeah, that's binding up now. So, fingers crossed, we're going to get some bites from a decent fish, but the uh, rad and perch were entertaining me. Gonna have to do something with this one as well. I feel I had one big sort of bang on the rod. Didn't actually pull any line off or backwind the reel or anything. Or go get some bait runner, sorry. But um, it was a, a real good whack. And because you obviously wonder, is the, the boy, it will still be there. I know it will be, but you always worry. Has it pulled it out of position? Has it pulled it into the weed? So I just crush this in there. Might be a sleepless night. You're banging that on the way down. Gonna use the last of the spicy crab. These are all not tench. Because the reel would be it's on back or it'd be turning if it was a tench. Decent rod there. I've only got quite a two hustle, I have to say. Okay. We've got the spicy crab. I think I'm about to top off with something else there. I found some extra fruity tuna. So they've got a little mix here. This will probably be the last cast on that rod tonight before it gets dark. Still going, look. they're not taking off the uh, reel handle. Just another tip, just make sure you always tie a knot in it, otherwise the next bag you make when you're tired in the middle of the night will send the bodies all over the floor. I'm gonna put my secret, the last of my secret weapon boilies on there right now, if I can find it. These are so good. I put them out, I take them off the hook and put them back in. I have one good one left. That is one left only. Let's hope it works on those tench. One big tench. Well, there's a fabulous sunset there. Sun's going down, so if I'm gonna catch anything, it's gonna be from now through the dark. So I've got a stocking, PVA stock in here with a bundle of fun for any fish that comes along. Just got to get it in the right spot. I don't want to go too far. Wind it up here. Set. Now, what do I do about these two? Wow, look at that sunset. I'm going to give them a few, a few boilies. You only come this way once, don't you? One big tench on those boilies would be nice. About seven pounds. I'm getting bigger than that actually. That's enough. Beep it away.
and I'm on again. Is it going to be a rud or is it going to be a perch? Big rud again. Big rud, I think. Should be netting these fish, but I'm on five pound line. Don't even have to say it's nice, because it is. This is interesting, because <clears throat> the sun has gone now. So we're getting on, the sun has set. Very interesting, they seem to have gone off on the uh, big rud. So a load of big rud. But I want a bream, a big bream. And in here they, well, monsters, I can't tell you. 16 pounds, I reckon it's the biggest to come out. I don't think I've even seen an eight pound. I'm a sad, sad person. I've never seen an eight pound bream. <clears throat> Five pound would be nice tonight. Or a nice big tench. Tench on there, on that boilie, and a bream on here on the well. But look, that was hammering away before. Literally, as the sun set, those ruds seemed to shut off. The last time in the other lake, when I did a film just tench fishing in the tench lake, the rod that were in there did shut off, and when they shut off, I did pick one or two tench up. It wasn't really until it's dark, but maybe the tench had moved in there. There is not a bubble, not a sign, nothing. No rolling. You get that oily roll where they come up and sort of pull push down with their fin. Don't seem to get that in gravel pits quite so much as you do in the state lake. Right. Madeira cake, gentlemen. Small fish again. Perch this time. Another big rod. Look at the size of them. Alright, time to turn this camera off and get the uh, other guy going, the low light one. Got fish on people. Quite a backwinder. Beauty this time, boys. Got absolute beauty. Absolute beaut. Check this one out, boys. Oh, what? That is a real, real good rod, is it not? Well pleased with that one. To be honest, he was biting for ages, and that's on worms and maggots cocktail. Back he goes. Well, it's pretty dead, other than that big rod. Um, <clears throat> I've got on to just bunches of maggots now because I've got those dendrobinas. But I don't want to get mullered by those by those rud. Otherwise I'll be up all night just with beeping away. But they stopped a bit now. So it tells me they're not really struck on the maggots, they want those worms badly. So what I'm gonna do, it's about a quarter past ten now, dark. I'm gonna um fish to about midnight and I will try the worms in a minute. 
nothing on that boilie now, it hasn't even moved and I haven't seen lights coming on around the lake of uh, catching. Um, job to know what to do really, I think I'll, I'll try the worms, give it till midnight and then I'll just have to get some real small boilies, I've got some in there, put them in a baited swim on, uh, on, a, on, a, on a bolt rig and that way at least I won't get woken up all the time and fingers crossed that's how they catch those big tench on the boilies so maybe, maybe I'll get lucky nice evening though I don't know what to say people, that is possibly the most quiet, brightless night I've ever had at a lake. That is ridiculous. The splashing you're hearing is the ducks who have found all the dog biscuits that are drifted out under a bush. So they think it's all their Christmases have come early. <laughs> I don't think I've had, well I haven't had one bite all night from any of the rods. The ducks are going crazy on those dog biscuits, seagulls are out, mist is out over the water. Those mosquitoes dive bombing me. Terrible. Oh yeah, the guy about 150 yards away who snores like nothing I've heard before. I would think if you sawed the leg of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it wouldn't make that noise. It was a cross between a diesel engine that's been run on petrol. Uh, he can't be married, he cannot be married. No woman would be in a bed with a man making that much noise 150 yards away he's obviously run out of petrol now because I can't hear anything just weird bobbins aren't moving I did get up twice I haven't really slept, just dozed it's just bizarre nice mist coming off the water Nothing on those dog biscuits at night. It's just nothing, nothing. No, I don't get it. One cart was caught over, way over in the corner. That was sort of early, early in the uh, darkness. Probably 11 o'clock, something like that. Might have been one white right down the other end of the lake. But other than that, it's just, just so dead, it's unbelievable. So, well, good job I really had the rud. So, what's happened to the tench? I don't know. I should think once it gets a bit more light I will get rad again. Well, check it out for yourself. As if I on cue, two beeps, two beeps on the left hand one, this won't be a tinge. It'll be. Start with the rad. Ready for action. Well, let's see, it's not a tench. A tench would have kept going and took it right up. It's a dreaded rut again, so no sleep at all. Amazing all the birds waking up in the morning. There's no dawn chorus. It's weird. Oh, one dawn chorus with the rut. Even that rut hasn't. Uh, Attack the worm, I suppose I better put some fresh worms out. No bubbles, no fizzing, no bow waving, no waking across the surface, no swirls. Honestly, I don't think I've known a, a night like that 
certainly the dawn is very, very, very quiet. And there is Mr. Robin. Don't tell me he wants even more maggots. Blimey, he's going to come in the bivvy with me, look. Yep, he's on the leftover maggots. Well, I can't say they got a small rudder, here, can I? I mean, I'm moaning, there's no tench or bream, but I've had some really good rudd. All right, just getting back, see if I can get an hour's catch-up sleep. Well, it was appearing that uh, the night shift was not happening at all. And indeed, the day shift are back on. So, nothing through the night, guys, but look. I'm still catching. Small perch on worms. So it's packing up time. Kind of disappointed I didn't get you guys decent fish. The rub was nice. That big rub was really makes up for everything else. But I thought I'd get big bream, nice tench. Just the way it is. So I'll probably, you know, it's still beeping away. I'll probably try and stock off somewhere else. See if I can't catch a fish or two. I don't know where. Cheers.